Welcome to Inside the Film Room. I'm Kristen Urgel. Today we'll talk men's and women's hoops, recap the games, and have a preview of the next matchups. We start with head men's basketball coach Matt Figger. Coach, you finished a 5-1 homestand. It's the program's first time doing this in 63 years. I think it's an understatement to say you're off to a great start. What's been key to this win streak? Um, Kristen, obviously playing six home games, that's been that's been one key. I mean, we, we were fortunate in the schedule that uh, our last two games of the non-conference and our first four games of the, the conference were all at home. So, so scheduling is part of it, but um, also, you know, being in those situations, having six games, sometimes you you have to battle complacency and um, and being in, in, in kind of a doldrum routine. And so uh, the fact that our kids were able to um, win the game, um, win a game before Christmas, which our last game we lost, but didn't come back to win four after Christmas break is a credit to those kids of, of, of the focus that they have and being able to deal with situations uh, that's not been normal for them, which means there's been no students and they've been alone and it's just all been basketball. So sometimes um, that gets a little monotonous. Now against SEMO, your team had a season high 22 offensive rebounds. It's the 10 straight game with double figures in that category. When you go back and watch the film, who stands out? Uh, you know, uh, obviously Terry uh, and, and Avery, they've been doing a great job getting on the offensive glass. Uh, we've been getting better contributions from uh, uh, Chris Bunton as far as the offensive rebound. And when uh, Richard Henderson's in there, he's been going on to the offensive glass. You know, the, the one thing is we're, we're rebounding it pretty well. Obviously, getting 22 means we're missing a lot of shots too, so we need to make a little more shots. Uh, two players picked up Players of the Week awards this week. Terry Taylor with the OBC's Freshman of the Week and Avery Ugba with Newcomer of the Week. Taylor is shooting at around 60% field goal percentage. He's near the top of the conference. What's enabling both of these guys to have success? Uh, just their, their work ethic as far as getting in the gym on their own. Um, I mean, you know, kids it, on top of uh, practice, uh, you got to get in the gym by yourself and, and you got to shoot balls when people aren't watching and, and both of them have been doing that and um, our players around them have been um, able to get them in spots where they can score so it, it's it's a credit to them as individuals and a credit to our team. Now you're leading the conference in steals right now averaging eight per game to what do you attribute that? Uh, you know I, I think early um, it, it uh, our, our, our extension of, of full court pressure, uh, getting out in the passing lanes, it's kind of backed off a little bit because uh, as teams play to, with each other, those turnover opportunities aren't there because more and more teams get, get to play with one another, they get, they get more comfortable with one another. But, you know, getting eight a game, uh, and it's something we don't emphasize. We emphasize being out in the passing lanes, but we don't emphasize necessarily stealing the ball. We emphasize disrupting and extending the passes. But um, for, that's a credit to our kids as well for understanding where they should be defensively. You go on the road to Tennessee Tech this week. The Golden Eagles average 78.6 points per game. The Govs average only surrendering 67.6 points per game. They're in a tie for second place in the OVC. What are you telling your team in preparation for this matchup? Well, you know, I don't get into, I don't really get into points scored and points given up. Um, it's about getting stops. Uh, it's about holding teams to a certain field goal percentage. You know, obviously they get a lot of opportunities in offense, uh, extra possessions. Um, they they uh, they run really good offense. Um, you know, from from their spacing and cutting, so it gives them scoring opportunities. You know, our deal is is to defend how we defend, and you know, I, I'm not too consumed about how many points they score. We got to be good in transition defense. We got to be good at disrupting their their um, dribble drive scheme. So those are the things I'm emphasizing, not points. Right now, you share the top spot in the OBC with a 4-0 record. No coach in Austin P history has ever started conference 6-0. What will the Govs have to do to keep this momentum going? Uh, well, obviously, win Thursday night uh, and, and take and beat Tennessee Tech. Um, you know that's our main focus is to be 5-0. Um, if you look at um, the season as a whole or anything like that, I don't look past one game. So Tennessee Tech is my main focus and. You know, we got to figure out a way to be one more point better than them. All right, thanks, Coach. Coming up, we'll visit with David Midlick. Stay with us.
Welcome back. I'm with head women's basketball coach David Midland. Coach, you're coming off a big win versus UT Martin. You had 22 points off of turnovers, 18 second chance points. How are you able to out hustle and out work the Skyhawks on both ends of the floor? Well, we had a good first quarter. We shot the basketball well, I think 66% from the floor, and, and making shots covers up a lot of things. But I do think our defensive effort's been pretty good, not only that game, but our first four conference games. Now, Bree Alexander and Michaela Campbell were the sparks to you in that UT Martin game. What were your thoughts about their performances? Well, Michaela had uh, two really good games offensively, double figures for us off the bench, UT Martin game and the Southeast Missouri game, and that gave us an inside-outside threat. And Alexander inside and, and Michaela outside. And, you know, we want to put a third, fourth, and fifth player hopefully in double figures, but both of them did a, did a good job for us both nights offensively. In Southeast Missouri game, three players finish with double figures, nine players on the score sheet against Southeast Missouri. How have you been able to maintain a balanced offense during conference play? Well, I think we've shared the basketball pretty well. We've been an unselfish team. That has started with, with Bree Williams, who I think is interviewed this week as well, too, and leads us in assist, and she's an unselfish pass first point guard, so it starts with her, but the team's have been unselfish uh, for these first 15 games of the year. Now, the Govs had 25 points off of 19 Red Hawk turnovers. How does this team disrupt explosive offenses so well? Uh, well, we try to uh, try to get in passing lanes and, and try not to let teams run their offense because we are a little bit smaller. We're basically playing down a position in each spot, which what that means is a player that's a forward is playing a center, a player that may be playing a, a a small forward is playing a bigger forward and so on down the line. So we've, we have to do some things to not let teams just run their offense and try to get the ball inside against us. Tough road swing on the docket. A Tennessee Tech, Jacksonville State, both on the road. What are you focusing on leading up to this week's matchups? Yeah, just what I mentioned, de defensively, we've been out-rebounded in, uh, in three of our four conference games, and teams are trying to be real physical with us, get the ball inside, drive the ball to the basket, and rebound against us. So that's been a focus these past two days. Tennessee Tech is known for their balanced offense as well. Four players sc scoring in double figures at Tennessee State. How will you look to stop them offensively? Well, just as you said, we want to disrupt them uh, offensively and try to take them out of what what they do. That's why we scout, and we also scout personnel. You know, there's certain players that like to catch it and shoot it. And there's ones that like to drive the ba basketball to the right. There's players that like to shoot the ball over a certain shoulder. So we try to take away. You know, they're number one or number two options uh, for each one of those four scores. All right, that'll be fun to watch. Best of luck. Next up, we go one on one with Bree Williams. Welcome back. I'm with Bree Williams, guard for the Governors. You did a good job against UT Martin and Southeast Missouri, keeping the turnovers to a minimum. What were the keys to collectively taking care of that basketball? Um, it's been a big focus for us. I feel like when we keep the, uh, the turnovers to a minimum, we are successful and we're able to win the games and, and like get shots, open shots, and not trying to do too much. So it's a, it's a big key to our success in the games. Now you were key in forcing turnovers. As a team, you had to combine 57 points off of turnovers. What was key to getting and keeping those opposing offenses uncomfortable? Um, it's big because we like to run in transition. So if we're able to force turnovers, we can get it and we can get out and run. And it's easier for us to get them open layups and open threes. So it's like we have to be intense and we have to be up and guarding folks. And not only that, we're small, so we have to get there, get on the folks so they won't be able to see and read. Now, you've been efficient and unselfish with the basketball, leading the team in assist and steals. How are you able to perform so well on both ends of the floor? Um, I just want to win, so I, I want to do whatever is possible to win, and that's getting up in their best player, or if that's making the unselfish pass to Fallon or Keisha for the three, then that's what it takes. I'm going to do it to win. That's a good mindset. Now, Coach Midlake really trusts you to be on the floor in general, distributing the ball and offensive sets. What goes through your mind when you're on the court? I try to read and see where the mismatch is at. So if, say, Fallon's hot for the game, I think we should run a play for Fallon. If B.A. got the mismatch, we should run a play for B.A. It's just knowing, like, I guess, who's open and what's the, what the other team doing in their strategy. Uh, this is a young team. Uh, 
what responsibility do you feel as an upperclassman to be a leader on and off that court? Uh, it's big because it's, we're young and we gonna need we need the freshmen or the, the people who come in from JUCO to win. So we just gotta I gotta get everybody in sync and make sure we on the right the right page to do what we want to do. All right, you have a lot of success now. Keep it up. Thanks so much. Both teams travel to Tennessee Tech. The women tip off at 5:30, and the men will follow that matchup. You can follow the games on our social media sites at Austin P W B B and Austin P M B B, and watch online at the OVC Digital Network. Thanks so much for watching Inside the Film Room. I'm Kristen Ergel. We'll see you next time.